Okay, so we are now going to review how to use the PARX system. So Julie, if you'd like to, please sign in. You can actually scan your badge though right here. You can backspace that. Take the handheld device and scan the barcode on your badge. The front? On um, the back, actually. The back one? Yep. And that will populate the user ID field there. And then go ahead and put in your password. And then submit. You can actually touch it. It is a touch screen. And then here it says um, scan the printer label. And that's actually referring to this is our printer here at the um, check station. And then this is the label here that it wants you to scan. So you can go ahead and scan that. Very good. Each time you sign into uh, PARX, it's always going to ask you to associate the device you're working on with a printer. And um, that's just one of the quirks of the system. So once you get signed in, this gives you the option here where you can choose an activity. If you're a technician, it'll be pick, other, or maintenance. Um, so from here, we'll go under pick. And you can just do the submit button there. And from here, these screens are actually also going to be on our uh, handheld device. I'm just using this for demonstration purposes because it's bigger. We will go under loaded items here. Loaded items are going to be things that would fill like on the midnight cart fill, or not midnight cart fill, the midnight Pixis fill report. Pending items would be items that are loaded into the Pixis but not yet delivered. Basically Diane does a lot of that sort of thing. Loaded and pending is like a combination of items that are already in there and need to be filled as well as items that are pending. Critical low is going to be items that are critically low. Stock outs will be items that have stocked out. Fill the max, that will be for this facility. Um, the OR Pixis med stations as well as the endo Pixis med stations. The critical low stock out just combines those two reports into one. And then on demand would be something we probably aren't going to use too often here. On occasion, if we needed to refill something, for instance, going into the holiday weekend, say uh, we wanted to increase ER's supply of sailing bags from 10 up to 20, but it's not yet showing uh, PARX isn't yet generating, oh, you need to refill. We can use this on demand and just kind of say, let's get it up to its maximum that way. But I don't think we'll use that too often. So at any rate, for this example, we're going to go with loaded items and go ahead and submit that and from there we're going to look at the um, N1S med station in rehab select that and then here it says select pick areas and pick areas the idea here is one of um, PARX we want you to walk through the pharmacy in a logical manner and Pick your items. So you're not picking items on one side of the pharmacy only to run all the way back to the other. Um, so the A large IV is basically starting back by Lisa and Barb's office where we have all the large IVs in the cardboard boxes. That's letter A large IV items in that general area. B unit dose is going to be all the tablets and capsules like this um, that are in the pharmacy. And then C is going to be respiratory meds, D will be eye drops, and it just kind of works through the pharmacy that way. But when we do this, generally, we're just going to do all pick areas, which is the button up there at the top. So go ahead and select that, and then hit submit. And here you can do by pick areas or by station. We are generally going to be doing these by pick areas. To do it by station, I don't really see where it makes a lot of sense because each time it's going to keep taking you back to the beginning and starting again. We have 31 Pixis med stations here and I don't really see a point of coming back through this pharmacy 20 plus times. Um, and each time you print a label with this system it's going to actually have on there the station that it's going to. So we're generally, from my vantage point, just going to be doing this by pick areas. So you go, go ahead and submit there. And I'm, like I said earlier, we're doing this here on this device, being the check station, which is here. But we really, in real world, would be using this. I'm just simply using this because it's bigger. But 
We'll do one here for example's sake here. Um, let's see, we have an isosorbide mononitrate 30 milligrams. So we will go ahead and get one of those. There we go. And Julie will now scan that with the handheld device. And once we scan it, the device will tell us the medication name here, the drug ID, the maximum quantity, the current quantity, and then how many we need to refill to bring it up to its max quantity, which is 16. Um, so, in this particular instance, we will have 16. So, grab a six more. And now we have our 16 tablets. So, we're good with that. Those are 16 tablets. So, we'll go ahead and we will submit that here. And then the device will generate a label. Go ahead and tear that off, Julie. And just grab one of those baggies there. Um, I don't have any big ones left. Okay. Uh, we'll be placing the label onto a baggie and I'm placing the medications into a baggie. Um, that baggie is really too small. But we'll for this particular instance, make do with what we got. So with that in mind, that's how we go and pick a medication in Parx. Thank you so much for watching.